Hello, welcome to Unwrapped with me, your girl Helen. I'm at Echo Park Lodge and I think the person I'm interviewing today just knows where to take me, where there is food. I love food and wow, this place has got nice, nice food. I'm talking to I'm talking to Lulu Hangala Wood today and some of you may remember her from uh, the game show on movie TV. She was a great presenter. Now she's doing a lot of motivational talks and she's an entrepreneur. I think we'll get to know a whole lot of stuff about her when we come back. Welcome back and uh, you're on Unwrapped and I'm chatting with Lulu Hangala Wood. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. How are you? I'm great. I'm just happy that you brought me where there's food and smoothies. And... Yes, this is why I love Echo Park. It's like my chill spot where I can just remove my heels. I've been having meetings all day mm-hmm. and I had to come down for this interview. I had to pick a spot where I can really chill. I've got a flu, so the blankets in case people are wondering. It's uh, doing a lot of work. Lot yeah, of work. so today I've you know, got tissue in hand. So this is where we can find you if we're looking for you? On a lazy day? Well, on a lazy day, yes. This is where you'll find me. Um, I like quiet places. Um, I love good food. So they, it's a mix of both. You know, I can do some work here on, on my laptop. And then I can also just have some good food and drinks. They have the best smoothies. I'm almost done with mine already. Done, actually. Pretty much done. And I'm not willing to share my <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just tell us, how have you been? Where have you been? Well, I've been around. You know, I, I get a lot of, you know, where have you been? I'm like, I'm, I'm around and I'm sharing what I'm getting up to on Facebook and Twitter mm-hmm. and Instagram. You guys can keep up with what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, it's It might not be on screen always. Um, there is a bit of on screen, but mostly it's offline. Um, Growing Dagon Media, which I partnered um, with uh, some great friends to open from Dagon Holding. And we've been growing Dagon Media now. We have Dagon Zambia and we've grown into six other countries. So it's really wow. exciting. It's been a fantastic journey. I'm also um, an editor for the entrepreneurship and education category on www.jump.co.za, the Jump platform, which is owned by Vodafone. And so that's been keeping me really busy besides being founder of the We Keep Moving project and trying to push a lot of events and and um, tours also to do with the We Keep Moving project. Okay, uh, let, me, let me just take you back. I think uh, that's, that, that, that's good, by the way. You've really just pushed your way from TV to doing a whole lot of things. I see a lot of you, uh, you being called for talks, encouraging young people. And I think people are really appreciating that and learning something from you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm one of them, and I keep following you on Instagram. Like, she's doing that. Wow, nice. <laughs> it's really good. Okay, uh, just to, let me just take you back to your young life. Where where did you go, grow up from? I know you can't speak Bemba, so definitely not from Bemba. No, <laughs> I actually started out. I was born on a farm. Uh, well, born in a UTH, but my parents lived on a farm. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't have much on them. I always tell this story just so that people have a, a good, concrete idea of where I started from. When my mom was in labor, they didn't even have a car. My dad had to ride eight kilometers with my mom on the back on a dust road to wow. go to the main road to hitchhike to go to UTH, where I was born. Um, I got on stage for the first time at the age of four. So um, one would say like I was born for the stage, but I used to sing. I never spoke. My dad and I had a cassette, so I worked from a young age. In order for us to have food when my parents were students, my dad and I would always go to different um, towns in Zimbabwe, cross over into Botswana or come into Zambia, sing at different churches, and then we'll sell our cassette and have money for the week. So I've always worked. In high school, I had a saloon. Um, When my parents had graduated before high school, they moved to Chipata and I became a maid for um, a certain American couple. Wow. They are the ones who sponsored my first two years of high school. In high school, I used to braid. So I've been a maid, I've braided, I've washed dishes, I have worked in a library. I've been wow. working you know, all my life and everything that I have has come through hard work. I think that's something a lot of people assume, ah, she got everything on a silver plate. Yeah. But I didn't. It's all been through a lot of hard work. Wow, uh, that that mu- that must have been tough. Do you ever feel like a demoralized at some point where you, can, you sometimes when you go to school and you're seeing your friends have everything and you are there, you have to go home and not be a normal kid, but you have to work because you know you have to earn. Yeah, it it it. Okay, maybe with the singing, I didn't. It was my life. So I just thought, well, that's their life, that's mine. It didn't affect me so much. But when I got into high school, the divide, because there were like really wealthy kids, and then there was me. And I remember in my first year of high school, school um, it was called Anderson in Zimbabwe. And 
it was a private Adventist school. And whenever someone, someone had stuff stolen, there's this one girl who was really mean and she would say, it's a poor girl that stole the stuff. So they always used to assume it was me. I was actually moved out of that dorm because of the how bad the bullying was. So it was hard. When did you know that you could do TV? Because uh, look, uh, listening to your story, I think you'd have ventured into music or uh, opening I think look. I realized that maybe <laughs> I didn't sing that well. <laughs> I think my parents pushed me because... Sing a little. One line. Of no. Anything. I'm shy. Yeah. I'm so shy. No. No, I, I, I've got a bad flu. <laughs> when, when was the first time you went on TV to, to start presenting? Um, my first time on TV, I, I was actually six, but I was singing. But real presentation was in my last year of uni when I came to ZNBC to do my internship in 2004. Mm-hmm. I did my internship at ZNBC and I had one opportunity to interview the- Angela Nurenda. Yes, yeah. I got to interview her and I think it was thrown onto the breakfast Kwacha Good Morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I went back to uni and my one of my lecturers said, You know what? I feel you belong in front of the camera. So he pushed me to do more work in front of the camera. And I started working for the Hope Channel as an intern and then finally they gave me a job to be in front of the camera so that that was my first real you know tv experience talking and not singing mm-hmm. nice yeah. then you came to zambia did you work yeah with- so 2005 i graduated came to zambia looked around for a job it was really hard to find one but finally there were auditions at movie tv they were looking for kids presenters i was already 21 at that time but they managed to get me because I told them I could come down to the level of a child. And so that's when I started on TV. Wow, that, yeah. that was great. I think you were one one of the great presenters. Why did you leave TV? I think I felt like I had reached the ceiling. I believe in continuing to grow and I love to challenge myself and it wasn't as challenging anymore. So I went into the corporate space. I did come back for about a year and a half when I was doing the game show. So while I was doing the game show, one thing people don't know is I was working full time for a bank. Okay. Yeah. So I used to leave the bank, then go and work um, on on, on the game show. the game show though at some point they felt i had done a lot of tv and they felt they wanted a new face as a station and that's only right so a lot of people were wondering but why did you just suddenly get off the game show that was because the tv station decided that they felt they needed a fresh face and it's one thing people don't understand about the media it's cutthroat it can be brutal sometimes Mm -hmm. it was brutal because i had quit my job at the bank decided to say okay now I'll do this full time because it was making good money yeah. but then they cut me wow. because they needed a fresh face they felt maybe the fresh face would bring more numbers so that's when I officially sort of left TV so it was quite abrupt and I had to hustle and find different avenues of making money so sometimes I think when you when you face a harsh reality of like you got nothing else to do your mind takes you into so many different places and I feel that's why I am where I am today. So those doors shut, but it opened me up to so much more afterwards. It, it was depressing when it happened. I had no money. I had to pull yeah. my daughter out of school. But, you know, I, I didn't take it to heart. I still have great relationships with, you know, all the stations I've worked with. It was just, you know, a decision made on merit. They needed a fresh face. Okay, I think let's take a break. But on this break, I just want to know how much you know about Zambian music. We're going to play the Zambian music video of your choice. Ha! Salma's new video. Ah, Zambezi. Yes. <laughs> Zambezi. Ah, proper. That's All right, let's check out Salma featuring Kaki from Ghana, right? Yes. Yeah, Zambezi.
that was Salma Sky with the featuring Kaki with Zambezi. <laughs> hey, I'm still chatting with Lulu Hangala Wood and we're just getting started, started. I'm enjoying your story so far. I think you come a long way and um, I'm really impressed. I must say, I'm really impressed with hearing that you were once a maid because when people see you today, they're just thinking, ah, oh, she's a diva. She can't do that. She can't. <laughs> I wish you knew. <laughs> yeah, the story behind. But that's, that's impressive. I think uh, we all need to know that we need to work to get to wherever we want to get. But uh, then, uh, this is the thing, you were in the spotlight and obviously rumors followed you. I think we don't know how true they were. Mm-hmm. When you were doing the game show on movie TV, you, you were bought a car? I don't know, but there was a car involved. The, the story I have is, mm-hmm. Mr. Miranda bought you a car mm-hmm. to congratulate you mm-hmm. on the job well done. But in fact, he didn't just buy that to congratulate you because he bought you that because you guys had an affair. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> Mr. Nyerenda is like a father to me. Guys, he's so old. That's my father. <laughs> <laughs> no, like really? to this day, I call him my father. When yeah. anyone that works for movie TV, when I see them, I'm like, how's my father? Uh-huh. That is my father. Mr. Nyerenda has a special place in my heart because he believed in my abilities. He pushed me to prove myself. I didn't just get those big shows, guys. I had to hustle my way to get those shows and not hustling by opening my legs. If I'd hustled by opening my legs, I was going to drop down so quickly and I was never going to go to fine life. That's what I believe. Yeah. Um, to open up about the car thing, I mean, it's years after it, after it. So when I started with the movie TV game show, I did one month and they made so much money. It was doing so well that they decided to extend it. So I had a one month contract. But in the extension, I knew that as much as a station can make so much money, you won't always get that big cut that you would, you would expect. So I told them, listen, I'm going to sign this contract. The next time you make a certain target of money, which they were planning to make, when you reach that target, what I want as a bonus is a car because I didn't have a car. I had been working eight years in the industry and I didn't own a car. Mm-hmm. So he said, okay, fine, that we can sign because it was targeted on my performance. My performance meant that if I go on TV, how many people are going to SMS in? So we reached a target. If we reach this round number, I want a car. That was in January. So in March on my birthday, they just surprised me on set with a cake first and I thought oh that is so sweet (laughs) and then now they changed it up and said we're going to play a game so I got a bit confused because they did all that on live TV without informing me of what was happening and then open the thingy and then there is a car and that's when it hit me oh my goodness we've already hit the numbers that I had put in my contract so it was part of my contract I worked for that car it was a bonus Oh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Where's that car now? I actually just sold it last year. Really? Yeah, That's I just nice. sold it last year. I had that car all this time. So it's clarified. Yes. Clarified. Okay, we'll move on to the next rumor. You had a child, the baby girl. Mm-hmm. Asante, my darling. Okay, how old is she now? She's nine. Wow. The rumor uh, went wrong was that you had that child with a uh, musician, LB. Are you sure? Because LB. there were many rumors. Firstly, they said Mr. Nurenda, then LV, then CQ. No, none of the above. He's not even Zambian. He doesn't live in Zambia. Okay. Yes. When did you, how old were you when you had your daughter? I was 24. So yes, I wasn't 16. Everyone assumed that I was like, (laughs) and I had my baby the first, because there's this rumor that she was notorious. Let's clear the air. I had my baby the first time I had sex. Really? Yes. Like the first, first, first time? My first ever time I got pregnant. Wow. So after that, it was like a slap in the face. I had to like, I became almost like a secondary version because I was just like, ah, you know, I, I yeah. can't do this anymore because it hit hard. How did and you take it? Like, It was very hard for me because you never think that one, the one time you try it, you're going to get pregnant. But I knew in my heart that I didn't want to have an abortion. And my partner at the time wasn't feeling comfortable enough to be a parent. So he said he wasn't willing to be a parent. And I said, okay, fine. And he said, if you make the decision to be to have the child, I won't be an active parent. And I respected that about him. Yeah. And I still respect it to this day. He is not an active parent. Mm-hmm. And I've brought up my child literally, practically on my own. How did your mother... My parents were actually really nice about it. Mm-hmm. I had lived a straight and narrow life all that time. I, I was dedicated to my work. I had finished school. And my parents said, mistakes happen. Okay? Yeah. 
and they were very supportive. I mean, my mom moved from another town. They were in Monza. They had moved back from Zim. She moved to Lusaka because she knew how hard it was. Uh, but how do you handle, uh, you know, you have that room already, the LVs, I don't know which one, the CQ, mm -hmm. whoever it is. Then there's uh, there's some people who look at you and say, oh, why, why do people get Lulu Hangala for motivational talks when she had a child? before she got married or what how do you handle that like have you seen some of those posts i've seen some posts on facebook yeah i mean they're there but i really don't care i know what the truth is yeah i know what what from my story people want to hear i'm very honest about my story i don't try to act like i'm this pure angel that has touched this earth I am a product of my experiences. My experiences have made me who I am today. Yeah. If they feel they're not going to get value from it, you don't have to come. And you know, that's okay. You've got a right to your opinion. So it really doesn't bother me much. People say all they want, but it used to bother me a lot until I realized that I was letting people dictate how I live. And I'm not embarrassed by it. You know, I had people even at some church saying she shouldn't come to church with her child because she's showing people that it's good to have a child out of wedlock. And I say, <laughs> what? That's ridiculous. I yeah. shouldn't love my child and show her love because you feel uncomfortable? Mm. Go jump. It's not that I'm saying, hey, I'm a motivational speaker. No, people just ask me to come and share. And I like to share experiences from my story because that's, that, that is the best teacher for me. That has been the best teacher for me. So I'm hoping by sharing my experience, you will learn something from it. Why am I being honest about me being pregnant the first time I had sex? Because as a young woman or a young man who's listening today, who's going to make a better choice when they decide to have sex for the first time and use protection or just abstain because I said, hmm. Hmm. I heard what Lulu said. Yeah. This is what happened. Things happen yeah. when you don't take care of yourself. Yeah. All right, I think we take another break. Then uh, when we come back, we still continue chatting. Hey, you're still on Unwrapped and I'm still chatting with Lulu Hangalawood and we get to know her a little, little more after the break. Welcome back, I'm still watching Unwrapped and I'm still chatting with Lulu Hangala Wood and we're enjoying the smoothie. <laughs> Mine is finished, <laughs> so unfair, she's taking it down so slowly. So slowly, so that you understand how it is. You, you can imagine. Yeah. You can check it in. Okay, so Lulu. Unfair. <laughs> Lulu, uh, you're married, eh? Yeah. How long have you been married? I have been married. Let me show three. <laughs> so, so I've been married um, almost two years now. Okay. Yeah. So people will be confused because they're like, no, but you got married in September. No, that was not our wedding, mm -hmm. wedding, wedding, wedding. That was our church wedding, but we formally got married much, much earlier. Okay. At a secret wedding, secret location. It was so special. Just really, really close family and friends. Just about 40 people. Why? I've always wanted that. I've always wanted something really intimate. But I do understand I've got a responsibility to, you know, everyone that follows me and staff yeah. who might want to see them. That's why the bigger wedding was there for them to see. Even though if you notice for the bigger wedding, I never even announced that I was getting married that weekend. Yeah. People just saw pictures. Yeah, I knew because I had bumped into yes. you and you were tracing you. <laughs> but how was it? How how's, how's your marriage life so far? It has been amazing. Yeah. Um, we are imperfectly perfect for each other. Um, there's no, you know, some people are like, ah, there's no perfect marriage. No, there's a perfect marriage. But what makes a perfect marriage is two imperfectly perfect yeah. people who come together. How many kids are you guys having? Hey, hopefully just the two. <laughs> come on, I thought you said if five. I have, if, I, no, <laughs> if I have any more children, my darlings, it's not that I didn't want you. It's just, you know, finances and all, but I'll take care of you still. But for now... Uh -huh. The two are enough. Ah. You know, the priest actually made a joke about it at our wedding and he asked, how many kids do you want? And I was like, two. And my husband is like, five. You see? I was like, yeah, dude. Banja, banja. <laughs> they say more children, the, the more the merrier. You guys, you know what? I think my husband and I just look at, at, at the type of quality of life we want to give to our children. Yeah. And we're trying to be realistic about the type of life we want to give them. And if we had any more, would we be able to give them that quality of life? Yeah. The answer right now is no. But you never know what God has in store. Okay, nice. I like that. Yeah. Both girls? Uh, no, boy and girl. Boy and girl so yeah. Asante is nine years old. Yeah. 
amazing little girl. And then Caleb, Mr. Energy Bunny, he is turning one year this month. Nice. At least you moved from Hangala Wood, Hangala to Wood. To Wood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ask you some random questions, and I want you to just uh, say the first thing that comes to your mind, right? So I'm okay, gonna be cool. reading them out. What's your favorite movie? First thing that comes to your mind. Lion King. <laughs> favorite color. Purple. If you are not into media, what would have been your second career? Lawyer. Wow. No, doctor. Pearls or diamonds? Diamonds. He got me this ring first, then he got me the real diamonds later. Yeah. <laughs> craziest thing you've ever done? What craziest thing I have ever done? Mute. Vinkuala or Visashi? What do you prefer? Vinkuvala when I was pregnant, Visashi now. <laughs> this is our favorite Zambian dish. Boiled fish. Favorite Tonga word? Luyando. Because it's your name. Yeah, it's a beautiful <laughs> word, love. Okay. <laughs> tattoos or piercings? Tattoos. I don't have any, but I prefer tattoos. Okay. Which kind would you say to outside Zambia? I'm not pierced. Uh, Italy. Okay. Then let's take a break. Pick a video. Mutale's new video. Cool. For those of you like me who haven't seen this video, I think we're seeing this video for the first time. Let's check out Mutale was in exploits. Some of you remember her from that. Mutale Kapasa. This is for my hobby. This is for my love. <laughs> enjoyed the interview oh thank you i've um, enjoyed it too i feel like i was just chatting to my friend yeah i've gotten to know <laughs> the other side of you and i think a lot of people out there are like wow so lulu because you know when we, we watch you on tv you're just looking like this hyper very talkative crazy girl <laughs> I was paid to be crazy, guys. You yeah. know, I was paid to be mad, and and this is something that I think I, you know, I should mention. A lot of people meet me, and they're like, "Are you acting? 
what's wrong with you? Are you sick? You yeah. look tired. And I'm like, no, this is just normally me. I'm not as crazy. You might find me acting crazy with my family or with my husband, but naturally around people that I'm not really fond of and all, mm-hmm. I can tend to be very quiet. Oh, uh, you're a good actress. <laughs> uh, we've come to the end of the program, and I would just love you to talk to maybe a young person out there who you would love to encourage. So my message to a young person today would be go out there and and, and work hard. Um, it's not success doesn't come easily and sometimes you are led to believe maybe by the way we put things across that oh it was so easy and then when you try get into the job especially those that are getting into media i'll speak to you specifically you get in there thinking it's going to be an easy ride you get on tv you become famous don't get in in, in, into it for the fame i want you to get in there do your best work hard people are going to be nasty to you people are going to call you too dark too ugly too dirty too something there's always something negative that they'll bring on you but if you really believe this is your calling go out there and push if it fails try doing something else on the side but if you still really believe that was my calling keep pushing for it because that's what was intended for you so it's all about hard work it's all about passion just don't give up Thank you for having me and don't and remember don't forget we keep moving all right uh, thank you so much and uh, I've learned a lot I'm one of the people who who has learned a lot from you thank you yeah thank you for having me thanks for agreeing to be on the show even though I was sick today guys <laughs> yeah the flu man you get you in my blanket you will feel but that's why we had to relax and take care of you because we don't want Mr. Hood to come and say you kept my wife mm-hmm. in the cold. Yeah? Hungry in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> All right, people, this has been Unwrapped with me, your girl Helen. I was chatting with Lulu Hangala Woods. Hope you've learned something. Like I always say on this show, we learn something from each and every person. And I think Lulu Hangala Wood, we just see how we just see how, see how on TV, magazines, and everyone, you just think her life has been like that. But you, we've learned she's been through a lot. And to get to where she is, she had to work hard. So, one of you people out there who's sitting back and thinking life will come easy, I think it's time to just stand up and do your work. Remember to like our Facebook page, Unwrapped with Helen, and there you get links. Even this show, it will be on our YouTube channel. You get to watch it as many times as it you want. It will be on YouTube. Want. Yeah, it will be on YouTube. So this has been your girl, Helen. Catch us next week as we bring one of your favorite celebrities. Bye-bye.